Good afternoon. Welcome to Entrepreneurial Live Interviews with Connie Fuchsa. Um, the Entrepreneurial Interviews segment is specifically designed to share with you guys people, real people, regular stories about people that wanted to start a business um, or maybe saw an opportunity and said, you know, I could do that for a living and decided to figure out how to do that. And I'm sharing these stories with you because they're either people that I've been introduced to or people that I know that are just have done exactly that. But I've also gone through the ups and downs, the peaks and the valleys, the mud puddles and the successes of the struggles that entrepreneurs have that you don't always know when you start something like this, or even if you're an owner, um, an owner of a business or a manager in a business, these kinds of challenges happen to everybody. And so I bring with you these live interviews so you guys can meet these people that are doing exactly what you want to do and some of the struggles they've gone through. And so you can actually see it's okay that sometimes you just sit there and say, okay, maybe I can't do this. Well, you can, and you're going to, and they, these guys have done it. So today I'm introducing you to a lady that I just recently met that I'm really excited to tell her story. It's very interesting. Um, I have with you today, we have Mandy Slight. Mandy, thanks so much for being with me. Thanks so much for having me, Connie. I'm excited to be here. Absolutely. Well, Mandy, do, do, do that. Tell us a little bit about you. Tell us where you came from, who you are, and what made you decide to do what you're doing now and exactly what exactly. are you doing. Sure. Um, so currently I am a freelance writer. I also do editing and proofreading services, but I actually um, got my career start as an insurance agent. Um, I, you know, writing started for me gosh, maybe 10 plus years ago, I have always just had a really big knack for being able to write and edit and proofread. I always excelled in language arts and English and classes like that. And when I got into college, um, I did most of my college, I went all the way through and got my MBA. And I did a lot of that online. And um, I started noticing a lot of frustrations with some other classmates and even some friends that were also in college that were struggling with um, getting poor grades on papers. And I started offering editing and proofreading services, just saying, hey, you know, I'm really good at this. So why can't I help you out? And it kind of snowballed from there. I'd been doing that for a long time. And then um, people were really frustrated with not being able to write good papers. And again, something that comes very naturally to me, I've never had a problem with it. So he said, hey, you know, if you want me to teach you how to do this, I can do it. I'll show you how I do it and the processes that I use and see if you can you know, make it your own and, and do it that way. And I'd actually mm -hmm. taken quite a few people from C and D paper writers to A and B paper writers. And the beauty of it is, you know, you teach them how to do it. They do it on their own. You offer editing and proofreading services to them a couple of times. And after a while, it's kind of like, you know what, you got the hang of this, you can do this. Um, all the while, while I was in college, I worked in insurance agents offices. I've been an employee pretty much my entire life. And um, in 2018, I kind of had some things happened in my life and I had been really, really interested in doing this as a business. I had been reading about it and thinking about it for a long time. I've, you know, being in the online world, this is kind of where things happen. And I was wondering, you know, how can I make this happen so that I can be my own, um, you know, my own, my run my own business and do this for a living. And, um, you know, I guess I was in the right place at the right time. I had taken a couple of courses with some women who run freelance writing businesses and make well over a hundred thousand dollars a year doing this. And they were kind, of, yeah, they were like my mentors in this. And I said, you know what? If they can do it, then I'm gonna take a stab at this and see if I can make it work. And I went live in the beginning of 2019, and I'm still doing it today and loving it. And things are going great. That's wonderful. Wow. So that's a perfect example of taking something that is a passion that you are very, um, that you're very good at, that you feel really strongly about and creating that into a business. I mean, it's not like, you know, people say, oh gosh, well, I can, I can write papers. I'm going to create a business doing that. But you did exactly that. You said, gosh, I just love doing this. And so let's see if I can make a living at it. And it's working out for you because you took some steps. So let's go back and talk yeah. about a couple of things that you just brought up. Um, mm -hmm. Let's talk about some of those steps that you took because you said, oh, I really like this, but I need to learn more about how to do it as a business. And tell us a little bit about that. How did you educate yourself about how to create that as a business? I know you said you took online courses, but where did you find them? How did you know to do that? Who did you know it was would be good to take from this person and you know, maybe not this person? 
sure. So, you know, I've been obviously being online, you know, I grew up in, in high school when things were just starting to get online. And as I started taking more classes online, um, started reading more, you know, blogs started to kind of be in the online space. And back then, of course, it was very different than what it is now. And I would read a lot of different blogs and, um, you know, just do a lot of online reading and realize that, you know, a lot of people said that going from academic writing to the online space can be difficult. A lot of people can't do it. And I said, you know, well, I'm, I'm up for the challenge. And I did some writing. I never posted it online or anything like that. But I did just some of my own writing to see how I could do it. And then as I kind of started to read more, I started to see more people that were doing this online and were saying, hey, you can do this as a regular person. You can do this. And I started reading more about it. And then as things progressed online and you started seeing more um, course creation and things like that, mm -hmm. I started being a little bit more discerning about where I spent my online time. And I was like, if I really want to try to make this work. How am I going to do this? Well, obviously, you want to follow people who are actually making it work and making a living doing it. And right. um, obviously, as a woman, I kind of tend to see how are women doing it? Because, you know, we think very differently than men. And if I can, um, you know, follow some women who have been very successful, you know, being from an insurance background, it's still very male dominated. And mm -hmm. when you come into online writing spaces, you can feel that way as well if you're not looking for the right people, right? So I started following women that were showing income reports online on their blogs and on their website saying, look, this is kind of how I did it and started to see how they were doing it. This was before affiliate marketing and all the other income streams really came about. Yeah. And then um, one of the women that I really had been following for a while created a course. And a lot of times when you create a course, you get a Facebook group that comes along with it. Mm -hmm. So I completed the course, got into the Facebook group. And the amazing thing about the Facebook group is that it's um, it's kind of a space where you can, you know, talk about the different projects that you're working on. Everybody mm -hmm. has different um, works on different types of projects and things like that with different um, industries and, and things. And uh, the great thing about it is the leads. You know, if somebody either has too much work or they know of somebody in a certain space and says, hey, these people are looking for writers or editors or whatever it is. And then that's actually how I landed my first two clients. And I'm actually still working with them to this day is that wow. they were posted in the Facebook group with the course. And I applied and said, you know, I'm part of this course and sent them some of the clips that I had created because at that point I had nothing really that I had written online. So I had to create my own. And, um, you know, we started working and I still work with them to this day. I mean, it's been great. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's really interesting. That's an interesting process. So as you're sharing with us, um, there's a couple of things that come to my mind. So first of all, thank you for sharing all that information because somebody may be out there saying, well, I'm going to do this online business, but I don't know how to get started. And so that's really, um, it's really just tuning into, uh, what, speaks to you and then follow starting to follow some of those people and right. from there started snowballing into i'm going to take a course now i'm in a group that you know shares information let's talk about that group for a minute too um uh so a lot of times people don't like to share with other entrepreneurs because they feel like oh somebody's going to steal my ideas or yes um, they're not you know instead of looking at it in a positive note where hey i'm going to get better fine tune at what I'm doing because I can see how other people have done it. So talk to us a little bit about that because that's clearly something that people maybe don't necessarily feel like that they want to share. But how do you look at that? You obviously look at that differently. So share with us about your thoughts on that. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's interesting because I actually used to have that thought process as well. Like, I don't want to share my tips and my tricks and my secrets because then somebody could use it. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I think as an entrepreneur, you kind of have to say, well, imitation is the best form of flattery because especially in the writing space, not nobody writes the same way as you. Everybody mm -hmm. writes differently. They have um, different knowledge, different background, different opinions. And um, when you're a writer, you know, you can write in the first person, third person. You can ghost write for people, which basically means that you're writing as if you're them and then they put their name on the work. So mm -hmm. um, if, to be a successful writer, you have to write in various different voices. And um, if you're writing for somebody else, sometimes you have to leave your opinions and your biases aside. Um, the great thing about being in this kind of group is that we all do work in all different industries um, mm -hmm. and all different types of writing because content 
is so many different things. It's social media, it's email sequences, it's white papers, it's all these different things. You can do copywriting or content writing. To mm-hmm. me, copywriting is more, you know, sales driven, sales pages, landing pages, things like that. Whereas mm-hmm. content writing is more, you know, website copy, um, blog posts, articles, things like that. Um, and everybody is very, very different in how they tackle things, the way that they do it, and the, the clients that they want to work with. So I feel like in the space that I'm in, at least, there is so much opportunity. For mm-hmm. example, personal finance seems to be a very, very big topic for people to write about. There's so many different personal finance writers in that group that I almost mm-hmm. said, you know what? I don't know if I'm going to go that route because I feel like it's it's been saturated. And now that I've been doing this for about a year and a half full time, I've kind of started to get more because I have a lot of personal knowledge in, in personal finance space. And it's mm-hmm. lended just some of the content that I've created on my own personal channels that people mm-hmm. have come to me and said, hey, you know, I like your angle on this. Would you write an article for me or would you work with me on certain aspects of things? And it's opened the doors for me to realize that it doesn't matter how inundated you feel you are in a certain industry. There's always going to be a different take you can put on it, a different mm-hmm. slant, just based on your own personality and your own experiences. Mm-hmm. You can definitely, it's, yes, it's a dime a dozen, but every single person is different enough that there is more than enough work to go around. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely love it. That's that is so factual in any kind of business, and I love how you um, gave all of the different thoughts about it. So, how did you know what class to take when you wanted to take a class to get more uh, in depth information on being able to start this business? Um, I think for me, um, I really started to only really pay attention to the people that I had been following for a while that were consistent. Yeah and Mm -hmm. open and honest because you don't Mm -hmm. want to go with somebody that is always everything's great everything's wonderful wonderful 100 percent of times because we know as entrepreneurs that is not the truth (laughs) i really started i really started to hone in on the people that were honest about the ups and the downs and Mm -hmm. um a couple of the people that i really really resonated with really did that they were very open and honest about the issues that you can run into Um, Mm -hmm. When it comes to, you know, being ghosted on pay or having really difficult editors or not seeing eye to eye with somebody and all the other things that can happen behind the scenes. And when Mm -hmm. you deal with somebody that is very open about these types of things and is like, look, this is how I deal with it. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like it gives you a really honest idea of what, you know, how how it's going to be perceived and how the the reality is of running this kind of a business. And, you know, I, I've taken a couple of courses and they're all for different reasons. And I like the ones that um, talk about the the meat of doing the actual business, but some of the behind the scenes stuff. So yeah. I'm very particular, you know, when I look at a course, I always look, what is included in this course? What are all the things that are included in it? Because mm-hmm. I got the writing down, you know, mm-hmm. it's I want to know all the other aspects of running this as a business to make myself mm-hmm. successful because it's just me. I do every part of my business by myself. So I don't have coworkers or a manager or a boss to fall back on and and level ideas at and stuff like that. So that's what I love about these types of courses, especially when you have a Facebook group that's involved in it, because Mm -hmm. then you can go through the course and you can ask questions, you can bounce ideas off. Like I've had them help me write my bio, write my, my elevator pitches. Like it's just, I feel like, especially when it comes to writing, you can't have too many people help you with things because they can come up with different wordings, different ideas. And it's, it's really, it's, I love the community. I'm in so many different writing groups now that they're, and I get so much knowledge and information from Mm -hmm. them and people are very free and open at, at, you know, at providing that info. Um, And especially people that have been in the business journalists, a lot of journalists are now doing this online. So it's interesting to see their perspective and how things have changed over the years because mm-hmm. then you can kind of get that inside scoop, if you will, from how things yeah. progress from online, from, I'm sorry, from imprint to online as, as it is now, especially right now with everything going on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is really good information because you're coming from a space that we haven't really talked to yet where everything you're doing is online. You're doing it by yourself. Um, mm-hmm. so you're 
really the solopreneur build for us and how you taught yourself. You knew you had something you wanted to do, but how did you build it into actually building a business? This is really good information. So <clears throat> one thing I wanted to ask you is share with us some struggles that you maybe things that you just never, when you said, oh, I'm going to start doing this, that you had that you just never saw coming. Like you, you know, you're starting a business. So obviously there's things you have to know. There's things you had to find out that maybe you weren't prepared for. Um, you know, you're by yourself and you're not running space. You don't have employees, but you have plenty of other things that are going on um, that you had to learn, know, and do in order to run that business. Maybe some things that you didn't think about uh, were going to be a struggle or you didn't even know about and how you got around those. Yeah, so I think it's it's a lot of it has to do with just the amount of everything you have to do. And so it's, you know, everybody gets the same 24 hours and it's really how you spend those 24 mm -hmm. hours. I've always, I, I, I do struggle with time management. And I think for me, a bit, the big struggle is prioritization and what is going to be the most impactful for my business. So you know, I, I think social media for me is a very double edged sword because especially now with so much information and so everything being out there because so many people are at home being online, you mm -hmm. can, for me anyway, I have noticed that there are times where I can get sucked into social media, scrolling through, reading this, reading that, kind of going off on these little rabbit mm -hmm. holes, if you will. And mm -hmm. you can spend three hours and not even realize you blank and three hours is gone. And, and mm -hmm. when, you know, when you need to produce for your business, sometimes that can be the real struggle is managing your time effectively and spending enough time because I get a lot of business from LinkedIn and Facebook are my main sources for finding business. So mm -hmm. I have to spend some time there, but you have to realize that if you're not, you have to be conscious of the time that you're spending because mm -hmm. if you're just randomly scrolling and you're not really doing anything specific for your business, it could be, you know, it's a time suck. Um, mm -hmm. So it's it's really for me the struggle of managing my time properly to be able to still produce and meet all my deadlines for my clients and knowing when to pull the plug and say, OK, you know, you spent too much time today doing, you know, whatever it is on the social media channel. Now it's time mm -hmm. to switch gears and go into doing something else. So I think it's that's been my main struggle is the time management and figuring out how to fit everything in. You know, I'm, I love in-person networking. I'm an, I was, I've been an insurance agent my whole life. So that was a big part of my business then. And I built relationships over the years. So I still do in-person networking. And I was finding that I was doing a lot of it, which I love because it got me more interaction from being at home, but it was really starting to tap into my time being able to produce. So you mm -hmm. have to find that fine line. The same thing with zoom right now, you know, there's so many, you know, everything's online, which is great because, you know, there are certain places where I would want to go to a networking event, but it was either too far when it came to travel time and I just didn't have enough time to invest or whatever it was. Now I can just hop online and get to the meeting and not have to travel, which is great. But it's not that great if you have to produce, you know, two articles in that time, that day, and it takes you X amount of hours, you know, to produce that amount. But mm -hmm. you have four or five or six hours of networking how's that going to work when, unless you want to work 12, 15 hours a day? I know I personally don't. So I try to be able to be really um, uh, cautious and, and um, you know, relevant with my time. Nice. Nice. So you talked a little bit about um, uh, mentoring, learning from other people. And, you know, we did talk about uh, sharing that and people feeling as though maybe they don't want to ask for help because they should already know how to do some of this and those kinds of things. But Talk to us about how you picked people. Like, I'm sure that there's people that you talk to, um, you know, you run into a problem. You're not just going and looking in your Facebook group. There's specific people that you reach out to as well. Talk to us about how that fits into your business and, you know, how you discovered uh, people that you could work with and that could help you in the, that kind of area. Sure. So, I mean, I think from just from over the years going out and networking, there are a lot of local people that I'll, I'll go to. I always try to go to people that are entre have been entrepreneurs for a while, um, that especially people that are kind of in the same space, even if it's just digital marketing um, mm -hmm. can is really helpful. Marketers in every sense of the word, whether you do promotions, you do digital marketing, whatever it is, they're a huge help for me because they help me um, realize all the different aspects, you know, especially when it comes to like time management and stuff like that, where mm -hmm. should you spend your time and, and things like that. But like 
I've always struggled with asking for help. I am one of those people. I want to do it all by myself. And I want to be able to say, hey, I did this all by myself. But you can't realistically do that. And when you can say, you know, you spend four hours um, researching something when you could have asked somebody and gotten the answer in 10 minutes. I mean, is that really an effective test uh, use of your time? Right. When you can have other entrepreneurs or even managers, I mean, if you can be an employee and still have this kind of knowledge, then you mm -hmm. can really, um, it really takes less time because you're not having to educate yourself. So I've learned over the years to ask for help. I mean, I never thought I would be like a person that got a business coach and I've been working with um, different coaches since, since the fall. And it, it's really helped me hone in on what's important to me not only in my business, but in my personal life and how I want to spend my time, what my goals are, you know, how mm -hmm. I, I'm not a huge goal setter. I'm not a big to-do list person. And I realize that there is value in that, that I guess mm -hmm. I didn't perceive at some point. And now I'm starting to realize that it really is something that I just need to kind of get over, you know, and, mm -hmm. and do it. So I think having these people that have been there, done that, is a huge, huge kind of like a what to do and what not to do. And it's mm -hmm. kind of like the Cliff Notes version. Then you don't have to spend all that time doing the research to come up with the exact same conclusion that somebody's already done for you. So I you love have that. to work the Notes version of being able to do it. Coming from the the um, con uh, the content creator, the writer, uh, the Cliff Notes version is what using a mentor. And I love that you brought up a coach because, um, you know, of course that's what I do for a living, but I love that People understand, you know, you don't think, oh, even if you've been doing your business for a long time, oh, I already know what to do. But the perspective mm -hmm. is different. You know, you're bringing somebody yes. in that has a different perspective of your business and gives you the fresh thought and um, the ability to create different uh, avenues uh, to take your business in different directions because of the way mm -hmm. that they see things and the way they make you think about things. So I think right. that having a coach at some point in your career is pivotal to your business. Um, so let me ask you this. You were talking a little bit about, you know, how you've uh, gotten, how you've uh, been able to establish clients through LinkedIn and Facebook. So mm -hmm. do you give us some, some tips on that? Do you run Facebook ads? Do you run LinkedIn ads? Do you reach out to people? Is it a networking kind of opportunity? Tell us how you, how you work through that. Give us a little insight so, there. Sure. So on Facebook, I'm in a lot of writing focused groups and mm -hmm. um, people will post leads in those groups a lot, whether it's for them themselves, something that they might have seen like on Twitter or somewhere mm -hmm. else or had gotten an email and they just couldn't do the work yeah. or it's something they weren't interested in, not in their niche, whatever it is. So I see those leads and I'll respond to those. That's a, that's the main thing in Facebook. Now, of course, it very well maybe I'm in a, in a different group and somebody's like, hey, I just I need somebody that can help me with the writing on my website. And this is what my niche is. And this is what I'm looking for. And if it's something that resonates with me, I'll reach out to them. When it comes to like, finding industry specific groups um, for your particular yes. industry, whatever that industry is, is good because it gives you the mentor piece, but it also gives you the piece um, of people sharing ideas and also potentially sharing uh, potential business. Yeah. And I mean, one of the things I can say across pretty much any um, any social media channel is provide value. Yeah. Know people that not only you know what you're talking about, but why you, why they should work with you. And it's not I don't I don't sell myself. I don't see myself mm -hmm. as selling myself. I don't I don't even necessarily see it as marketing. I am. I am providing value to somebody that needs it in that moment. And if, mm -hmm. and, and to me, if they reach out to me and we, they become my client, that's fantastic. If not, then I'm totally okay with providing free value to people because yeah. that helps fill my cup. You know, I'm mm -hmm. one of those people I love to help people. And if I can help somebody say, Oh man, I didn't think of it that way. Or, Oh, that was great information. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate it. You never that's know. Right. I had somebody months later randomly message me and say, Hey, you, my, my friend or my co whatever it is, talked to you months ago in a Facebook group or a LinkedIn group. And now they said, hey, they, your name came up. I don't know this person at all. We very briefly interacted months before, but now it's gotten me a lead. And even though I didn't get anything from them, I was able to potentially get a new client through them. Sure. So providing value is huge. Like LinkedIn, that's what I do um, a lot. I comment. I got one of my clients was not even trying at all. I was just talking to somebody in comments and she saw my comment 
And she messaged me and she's a financial planner. And she said, look, I want to take this angle when it comes to financial planning. And I read your comments and I read your profile. And I, and we talked on the phone for like an hour. We had a ton in common. We just worked, we just hit it off immediately. She's like, nice. I want to start this project and you seem like the mm -hmm. perfect person. Will you work with me? And I've been working with her for, it's been almost a year now. And I do um, editing and proofreading. She's, um, English is not her first language. So I do some some things for her there, but I also write for her as well. Nice. And I mean, you just never know where clients are going to come. So providing value at, without an expectation of getting business from it, I think is probably my number one tip when it comes to using um, social media. Don't expect anything from it. But be honest, be authentic, and provide that value to somebody. It positions you as an expert, makes you makes people realize you know what you're talking about, and then they understand why you are in the industry and you do what you do for a living. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So if somebody asked you who hadn't met you, networking event, whatever, you meet somebody new on the street, what you do for a living, how can you explain what you do in 10 words or less? In 10 words or less, me and Connie. I'm asking uh, the writer to do that. <laughs> yeah, that's tough. See, I, yeah, I would say um, I create engaging, I'm trying, now I got to count them. I create no, engaging and, and compelling rough. content for your readers. Nice. That's very good. See, that's great. Yep. That's fantastic. I don't know. It didn't really have to be 10. It's just to try to keep that. I, I, I get <laughs> it. I think somebody You're on the nose, right? That was great. That was great. Is there any um, particular projects you're working on that you wanted to share or a nonprofit that you do work with um, at, either inside or outside of your business? Uh, any additional stuff you wanted to share us something uh, of that nature with us? Um, I've been getting right now. Well, I'm part of the Holistic Chamber of Commerce. We actually have been doing a, a ton of stuff. We had been working, getting into the school system here. And um, I'm in this part of the Severna Park chapter here in Maryland. And um, we had just been getting into the school system to help both teachers, administrators, and students even with health and wellness. Health and wellness is a huge passion of mine. I have a lot of knowledge. I love writing it in, in that space as well. And um, we were really starting to hone in on health and wellness as a whole, whether it's physical and mental mental part of the body. And we were doing getting a lot of traction there. And of course, then everything hit with the virus. And now that's kind of been shuttled at least until the fall, maybe even later. Yeah. Um, but I've been, you know, I've been very active with, um, a lot of the rescues. I'm a, I, I, I'm a huge dog lover. I rescue all my pets and that kind of stuff. So because of everything going on and people not being able to go in, they're having, they're struggling with having enough money to continue mm -hmm. to feed and take care of the animals. And also, um, with reduction in, um, adoptions. You know, okay. they're really struggling, especially places like Barks down in Baltimore City. So anybody that's an animal lover, um, I suggest going and looking at your local rescues, even animal control. And if they're looking like they're struggling, if you have some money to donate to do that, because that's really where I've been trying to spend some of my money. Plus some of the local small businesses, restaurants and stuff like that that are really struggling. Nice, nice. Uh, so if you could give a piece of advice to a struggling entrepreneur or a new -er entrepreneur trying to figure out what, um, how to get past a struggle or, you know, maybe getting something started in some pieces that they just don't know, what's a piece of advice you could give us your number one go to got to have piece of advice? Reach out to other people that are doing what you're doing. And mm -hmm. don't say, I just, I, I need to know exactly how you did this because what somebody else does is not going to be exactly what you should do, but right. it, have a conversation with them and ask them kind of some of the same questions you've asked me today. And, you know, just find out what have their struggles been? What have been their successes? If they had a couple of pieces of advice to give you, what would they, what would they give you? Make it yeah. short, make it sweet. Ask a couple of questions. Don't get real involved unless they seem like they really want to interact with you because the only way that you're ever going to be able to make it in this space is to See what other people have done and either say, I want to do that or I'm definitely not going to do that. <laughs> Very good. Mandy, if somebody wants to get in touch with you after today, how do they find you? Um, you can find me on LinkedIn. That's probably where I'm most active. You can find me on, on um, Facebook. You can also find me um, on my website. It's www.mandyslate.com. Um, probably LinkedIn is where I spend most of my social media time. So if you were on LinkedIn, Send me a connect request and um, we can chat in, in the uh, in the messages. 
There we go. There we go. And uh, so, guys, uh, lots of good information here, uh, lots of good nuggets on how to work in your business, how to talk with other people, how to share information, how to be strong and not be afraid to ask for help. Um, how to just take hold of what you want to do and figure out how to do it. Get out there and learn. There's so much good information out there. Mandy, it has been a phenomenal pleasure of mine to have you on today. I've learned so much, got so much good information and so many good notes. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Connie. I really appreciate it. This was a lot of fun. Absolutely. Well, guys, as I've said, um, we, we do several interviews each week. Um, I'm trying to find entrepreneurs that are, you know, just figuring out how to do what you already want to do or maybe work through struggles that you have. And a lot of these th themes along these conversations are similar, but with different twists based on what their experiences are. So this has uh, been a phenomenal interview today with Mandy. And I want you guys to know it will be it stream live on YouTube as well. Go subscribe to my YouTube. YouTube channel, Connie Fuchsa, so you don't miss any additional interviews. You can also go back and look at any of the other ones that have already happened. It'll be on Facebook. It's on there live right now as well. And then it'll be posted on our LinkedIn um, and we'll be tagging Mandy on that. So you'll be able to find it there with her. If you want more information on coaching or trying to find out how to share information about your business further, go to my webpage, ConnieFuchsa.com, and you can certainly get some more information. We can talk there and I would love to have an additional conversation. So again, Mandy, thanks so much for your time. And guys, tune, tune in again to the next Entrepreneurial Live interviews with Connie Fuchsa, which will be tomorrow. Have a great day, guys. Thanks, Connie. Take care, everybody.